This week, Mike and I have come to the Arctic Circle to learn from the Swedes some of the finer points of something they do extremely well. I'm talking, of course, about ice driving. Yes, it certainly helps if you're an expert driver, which most Swedes are. They have to learn ice driving techniques as part of their test. Another handy thing is having the right car. A cute little rear-wheel drive sports car may be just fine if you live in California. But for Sweden in winter, then how about a Volvo? Volvos are designed and built to withstand the Swedish climate. They're solid and they're safe, tough and very well equipped. For our visit to Sweden, Mike and I drove S and V 40s. There are 10 cars in the range and they're proof of Volvo's new stylish image. Cars that are now desirable not just for being safe and sensible, but for looking sexy and sleek as well. Featuring high on the list of equipment is a very effective climate control system. Electric front seats, an electrically heated rear mirror and extremely efficient headlights with their own wipers. Just perfect for coping with cold conditions. As always in a Volvo, everything has been designed with safety as a priority. One option available well worth going for is Dynamic Stability Assistance, or DSA. Or, as the Swedes like to call it, don't slip anymore. This works to control wheel spin at whatever speed you may be travelling at and whatever the road surface, wet, gravel, snow. It gives the driver greater control and, as you can imagine, is very popular in Sweden. OK, well, it's all very well having the right car for the right conditions, but the way you prepare that car is extremely important in the morning. Now, we might be in northern Sweden or wherever we are, somewhere near the Arctic Circle, and it might be pretty extreme conditions here, but the conditions that apply here apply at home as well. And you need two very simple tools in the morning when the weather's like this. A simple scraper, none of that fancy stuff, just a piece of perspex, and a brush, a soft brush, which you use only for the car, keep them in the car. Look, just look how easy this is when there's snow on the car. Same with, these, with the scraper, no fancy stuff, just a good old bit of elbow grease. Clear everything, you know, don't just clear the driver's side. I'm not doing it properly because we don't have much time, but clear your side windows as well. Look, it takes seconds to do this, and it's seconds that might save your life. The lights, very important. Always clean, brush the snow from the, the, the mirrors and the lights. Probably the most important thing is these lights and that front screen. I mean, what's the point in putting your indicators on to tell people what you're doing if your indicators are covered in snow? We've got studded tyres, thankfully. That makes me feel a lot happier. Also notice that we, we thought about it a little bit last night. When we parked this car, we parked the car this way, which means there's no awkward reversing out we simply are facing the right way, we're ready to go, but of course there's one important thing yet, and that's that we've got to bring the car up to the correct temperature. We've got to defrost that windscreen, and that means putting that heater on. We're going to get in the car and actually try and build the interior temperature up to about 18 degrees centigrade, which is the ideal temperature for driving. A little bit warmer, you get too comfortable, too lethargic, a little bit colder, your concentration goes amiss. So 18 degrees centigrade, if you haven't got a in-car thermometer, go and buy one, cost you about a fiver, worth its weight in gold. And the other thing, of course, you do not drive off until that car is thoroughly, thoroughly thawed out. And what does this come in? How does this come into the equation? Well, it's quite simple. While you're waiting for your car to demist and defrost, you just have a cuppa inside the motor. Well, after advice from our expert on how to defrost, it was time to put the car through its paces in the snow. I think that spending your life living in a freezer has sent the locals completely barking mad. The temperature's minus 11, and they've brought us into the middle of a frozen lake to drive like madmen, which was bad enough. But now I've just noticed this. There's a crack in the ice. Do you know, my mother always told me I was far too trusting. Luckily for us, we found one partially sane Swede who knew his stuff and gave Mike and I a few tips on how to drive on a frozen lake with a crack in it.
Well, I'm joined by the lunatic that sets up these things. He's the man that arranges for the lake to be frozen. Uh, he's the man that gets all the cars here. God knows where he gets them from. God knows where he flies them in for. With the greatest respect, Robert, you've got to be slightly mad to be driving in Sweden 365 days a year, haven't you? No, you, you, it's, uh, you learn it when, you're, uh, when you start to... When you're 18 years old, it's no problems. Well, technically, yeah, legally you start at 18, but you all got, you guys all start driving on the ice when you're about nine years old, don't you? Sometimes, yes. <laughs> that means all the time. Let me tell you. No, but quite seriously, it seems to me that the big difference is between you guys and us blokes at home is that it's familiarity. You're living with it every day. Snow is not a problem. Ice is not a problem. You just take it in your stride. It doesn't stop you from doing anything, does it? No, uh, you have to... After the condi conditions, you have to, uh, what do you say, keep the speed after the conditions. It's yeah. Drive at an appropriate speed. Yeah. Now, we were talking last night over dinner about uh, the mistakes that people make. Let's run through some of those classic mistakes. First of all, big thing of yours, keep your distance. Yeah, that's the most important thing in the winter, keep the distance. You know, we have this two-second rule in the UK. Have you heard this, where you leave a two-second gap? Yeah, That's not well, enough, is it? No, not on winter roads. No. no. We have it the same in, in uh, paved summer roads in Sweden, two or three seconds. Or OK. Keep your distance. What about the tyres on your car? Everybody just uses it, whether they're going on their summer vacation and the weather is perfect, or they're going uh, out in the rain or in the snow and ice, they have the same tyres. Is that an ideal scenario? In Sweden, you can't. In these conditions, you can't have uh, summer tires. You have to get contact tires or tires with uh, studs. I uh, prefer studs okay. if it's icy. St you, you even said to me last night. I seem to remember there are some conditions where studs are essential uh, in some icy conditions. Yeah, if it's around freezing point, it's more ice than snow. Then mm. you have to get. Uh, you gotta have studs. All right. So a compromise might be for the people in the UK because studded tires are not really a reality. It's contact tires or all weather tires or winter tires. They're sometimes called too. Yeah, I, I think contact tires is the uh, studded tires for Englishmen is no. one day every. Fifth year, yeah, maybe. But the trouble with those is that we might run them all winter and not see any snow. We'll be wearing out those tires; they're more expensive. Yes. Uh, that's the problem, isn't it? Damage the roads as well. Mm. Mm. Well, they're in a bad enough state as they are. Our <laughs> roads in England. Uh, now, what about if people are driving along and they see those nice tracks in the road? Should they aim for those those ruts, or should they be driving on the snow? Where do you get the best traction? The best traction you get. Uh, if you have to panic brake, go out from the tracks because it's usually ice mm -hmm. and try to, to reverse on the snow is better. So you get better traction by staying on the white stuff. Yeah. The traction on the ice that looks or, or, or the tarmac which it may could, have... A th it, could, it could be perfect. It yeah. could be non-ice, but you don't know. No then it's better to take the snow. OK. What about four-wheel drive? Everybody in Britain thinks that as long as they've got a four-wheel drive car, they'll live forever. Have four-wheel drive, wear a condom, you'll never die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't drive. Forget the condom bit. Yeah, I don't uh, drive uh, four-wheel drive. I, if, if you're living in a hilly, lots of hills and mountains, that, then it's OK, but I don't think you need it. All right, what about front-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive? Front-wheel drive is better for people who can't drive. Yeah. The, like the, the ordinary airline. <laughs> I was that bad. <laughs> uh, the only thing you have to take care of when you, when it's like this in England, or it's just take it easy and, and uh, keep the distance. And smoothness, smoothness, smoothness. Yeah. smoothness. No fast turns, uh, fast braking right. if you don't have ABS. So no violence with the wheel no. or the pedals yeah. or anything. Just a silky, silky smooth. Yeah. The other thing is, and it's a question I'm often asked, you know, and people are terrified by it, believe me, in the UK, you know, what happens if my car goes into a skid? What do I do? Can you give them some very, very basic rules? I know it, it's dangerous to give advice like this, but uh, what, are, what are some tips? If you're driving along, your wheels lock up, your car is out of control, yeah. you have no steering, what should you do? Uh, let the brake. <laughs> Lose the brake. Come I mean, off the brake. Yeah, come off the brake. If you don't have uh, the ABS system, you have to, if you're panic braking, you have to do like this. Uh, cadence braking? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you put it uh, down all the way, you can't steer, it, then you're gone. Yeah. But what is the cure? You come off the brake, try to regain the steering, yeah, yeah. and then maybe back yeah, on the brake yeah, again yeah, later. Yeah. Yeah. All fast, like an ABS system. Yeah, okay. On off, on off, all, all right. the time and steering. But 
the, at the end of the day, slow down, more distance, yeah. and silky smooth. Yeah. You can see Mr Rutherford giving it loads right behind my shoulder there. And now it's my turn to get some expert lessons from the top Swedish driver. But then all Swedes seem to be fantastic drivers anyway. The thing you have to do is don't do like that. Straight up. Uh, slow movement. Slow, slow movement. And try to be uh, near, near the coast. Near the coast. Yeah. Near the coast. Yeah. Near well, don't hit them. Near the cones. Am I near enough? Yeah. There you go. Easy if you know how. Well, easy in the right car with a bit of expert tuition. I'll never complain about half an inch of slush again.